Hello everybody, this is Kaizen here, and welcome to episode 2 here in our Redstone tutorial series. Uh, now last week we went over a load of different inputs and some Redstone fundamentals, so today I thought what we'd do is finish off all of the Redstone inputs, and again we'll look at some more circuits that you can do with what we'd learn in today's lesson. Uh, so today we're going to focus on the rest of the variable inputs, we started on those last time but by no means got close to finishing, um, and then as I say go through some useful circuits that you can achieve with these types of variable input. So the most common of the variable inputs are probably the two pressure plates that you see here, the wooden and the stone pressure plate. So to make the wooden one, you need to put two planks, and they can be any type of plank, in a crafting bench like this. And to make a stone one, it's just two smooth stone like that. Um, now, they're kind of similar, and you've probably used them a lot in terms of just putting them in front of a door or a gate or something like that to uh, allow the ease of access for those things. Um, we see here, if we stand on a wooden pressure plate, it sends signals right down to every light apart from the last one, um, and that is the 16 blocks. So same as last episode, these are all 16 blocks. So uh, by standing on a wooden pressure plate, we get a full output. Similarly, if we stand on a stone pressure plate, again, we get a full output there of 15 blocks. Um, now... As well as standing on a pressure plate, if we grab some items here, and I'll grab some stone, and if I throw a stone on there like that, you'll see that that also turns on, and just one piece of stone turns on the entire set of torches, um, so, or lamps, I should say. So one item will send out a full signal on a wooden pressure plate. However, if we go to a stone pressure plate and we throw one item on, you'll see that absolutely nothing happens. And it doesn't matter how many items we throw on, we can throw a whole bunch of them on, uh, nothing is ever going to happen. The stone pressure plates do not recognize items and can only be set off by a player or an entity. So if we put a creeper in here now, I'll show you that it will do the exact same thing as if we were stood there. Oops, apart from I need to change it from peaceful because <laughs> otherwise they won't stay. Uh, but the creeper's there and sends a full signal just like we do by standing on it. Okay, so moving on now we have the golden and the iron pressure plates. The gold one can be made by putting two gold ingots in a crafting bench like this, and the iron one can be made by putting two iron ingots in a crafting bench like that. Now if I just get these for a second, and select them up, you'll see the gold one, it says weighted pressure plate light, and the iron one says weighted pressure plate heavy. And we'll explain what that is in just a second. Um, but just to say, if I stand on this golden one, you'll see that one pulse, uh, one block is, is lit up, the one lamp, so it's a very weak redstone signal that gets sent out. And similarly, if I stand on the iron one, the exact same thing happens. Uh, now, if I were to throw an item onto this pressure plate here, you'll see the same thing happens. It gets sent off. Um, and if I throw on, uh, let's throw on a whole stack of items there, you'll see now it's gone up to two. Throw on like a, another stack there, like that, and then we're up to three. So basically, by throwing on extra items, you can send extra signals out along this gold one. Now, you'll notice there that by throwing a stack at a time, it lights it up further and further. Now if we look at the iron one and we throw one item onto the iron one, again it lights up the first one. If we throw a stack of the items on like that, nothing actually changes. Um, and we can throw a few stacks on here like that, and you'll see still nothing changes. So actually, you have to throw on a whole ton of items um, before anything happens. Um, and if we just throw on loads of stacks here, um, you'll see that in a second it will eventually change, and now we're on the second one. But we had to go through quite a lot to get to that stage. Um, now, I'm going to go through the exact quantities in future videos um, as to you know, how much quantity it takes per uh, redstone uh, signal pulse, uh, but well, it's really not necessary to know at the moment, it's just important to understand that they, they go different distances depending on what's on them. Um, so if we have a look now at what happens when we put entities on here, I can show you that if I put one creeper on there, uh, we get one lamp lit up. If I put two on there, we get two. Three is three, four is four, and so on up to fifteen. And if we do the same here with our iron pressure plate, or our heavy pressure plate, um, once I put one creeper on there, we still get the one. But if I put another one, nothing happens. Now you notice that was two creepers, so here we go. This is number three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and number eleven. And on the eleventh one, we get another pulse. And every ten that we place on there, we get one extra lit up. So that explains to you why they're called light and heavy. This one, um, it takes less amount of weight on it to send a signal a certain distance than it would take with the iron one. Now that can be very useful in some advanced redstone circuits, which we will go into in the future, uh, but for now it's just to understand the differences between them. Um, so, as I say, those are the most commonly used variable input uh, sources for redstone circuits. Um, some things that are pretty cool, um, one of them is the daylight sensor. 
Um, so that can be made like this. So you need three slabs, some quartz there, and some glass up top. Um, now, that will make you a daylight sensor, and if I right click it, you get a nighttime sensor, it turns this bluish color. So it does pretty much exactly what it says. It senses the daylight, and depending on what time of day it is, you'll get different pulses of signal. So if we look for our sun right now, there it is up there. This is the signal that we've got here from the sun being in that position of the sky, in the sky. If I did slash time set uh, zero like that, you'll notice that that dropped way down and the sun's over there. Um, if I do slash time set 1000, you'll see that it goes on a bit more and the sun has become higher up in the sky. Um, similarly, if I do time, oops, slash time set night, you'll see that this one largely turns off and this one here comes on because this is the nighttime sensor and again that will change depending on the time of night that it is. So I'm sure you're already thinking of some cool circuits you can do with them. Obviously they're very commonly used uh, for lighting solutions and I've got a few examples of that in just a second. Um, but again they can be quite useful for a whole range of redstone uh, contraptions, things like clocks for example um, or as I say lighting or anything where you want a difference between day and night or even degrees of day and night. Uh, that's where these guys come into play. Um, okay, so just finishing off with some other useful variable input sources. Uh, first of all, we have the tripwire hook. Um, the tripwire hook here, you can see uh, it's got this string. You need string to arm it. If I break one of those, you'll notice it kind of clicks out there. And uh, you'll see here, this is now not armed. However, uh, and if I walk between them, nothing happens. But if I place string between here like this, and if I place this one, you'll hear a little click like that. And if I stand on that, you'll see it triggers a full redstone pulse signal, the 15 blocks down that way, and lights up those lamps. Um, so it basically powers this block, so we could put redstone here or here, um, and similarly we can do the same on this side, here or here or here. Uh, if you place redstone on top, um, like that, it will also power that. So you've got a few options as to where you power it. Um, it basically just powers this block. Um, on top of that, uh, we have an observer block, and the observer block does just that, it observes. And when it observes something, it sends a pulse out like that. So the, it goes the full distance, but only for a brief pulse, whether you place or whether you break. Now these are commonly used in auto farms, and I will come on to that in later episodes. Um, the auto farms, almost all of them require pistons, and pistons are a bit more of an advanced concept that I'm going to go through in a later episode, rather than such an early point in this series. So when we come to that, these guys will come back into play. Just to say, the recipe for an observer block is like this. You need six cobble, two redstone dust, and one quartz in that arrangement. Um, and then we have the trap chest, which is a normal chest with a uh, tripwire hook, that's how you create it, uh, and that can be placed anywhere in the crafting bench. Um, but basically, once you have that, if I open this, you'll see it sends out a signal of one. So this light will light up if you keep your eye on that. If I do it like this, you can see down there that light is on, and once we let the chest close again, that goes off. So it sends a little pulse out, and again, there's all different things you can do with that, um, and some advanced concepts and things. And, you know, I think the way to think about redstone is... You, once you understand these different sources, you can think, well, why would I want to send a pulse when I'm opening a chest? And you can think about some things that perhaps you want to do when you open a chest. And then you go, right, well, this is the start point. We get a pulse, and then we can go off from there. Um, and that kind of then you know stems onto other ideas. Now, the final thing I wanted to show you today is a simple redstone concept, but a very, very important one. Um, if you're going to learn one thing that's going to be important in redstone from this episode, then this is it, guys. So we have here two identical circuits. Um, the only difference between them is that one is what we call inverted. So this lamp here is off by default, and if I flick a button, it goes on and then off again, of course, because it's a pulse. Uh, this one here, you can see this is currently off, just like this one, but this bit is on due to this torch. And so the lamp is therefore on by default, so it's inverted, it's the opposite of this one. Um, now with this one, if we flick the lever here, you'll see that that now turns it off. So by turning something on, by turning the lever on, the light goes off, which is a contrast to what normally happens in circuits. And that is very useful for a whole range of things. And as you get more into redstone, you'll realize just why these inversions are so important. Now there's a few different ways you can do inversions, but this is the simplest and most common way of doing them. Okay, so now we're gonna move over and uh, look through some cool devices that you can do with today's episode's um, ideas. So. The first one, I think this is quite useful for AFK farms, particularly AFK fishing farms, which I know are hugely popular nowadays. Um, it's a very simple concept. You've got here an iron door. Uh, it can be any type of door. And by default, it is open. So we go in here, and we want to do some AFK fishing. So this is the block we stand on to do our AFK fishing, or whatever else we want to do. And the door, as you can see, has shut behind us, which is very useful. So we do our AFK fishing, and then when we're finished, we run out, 
and the door opens again. So to show that again, you run on, stand on anything, do your work, and then off you go again. Now if you stand at the start of this block, so if I'm only just on it like that, by the time I sprint off of it and I go through the door, that's the perfect distance. So just to say that is one, two, three, four, five, and the door on the sixth block. You'll notice, however, if I stand more towards this side and I'm still pressuring it from this side, and then I sprint, well, that time I made it, of course, um, but it doesn't. it's not always as easy to make it work. There we go. That was a bit of a delay and sometimes you get caught. Um, just a minor thing, but I thought I'd mention it. So what's actually happening here? Well, I've dissected this for you and I've shown you this here. So what we're using here is a pressure plate and an inverted circuit. So this here is the inversion that we talked about just over there. So the redstone goes into a block and then into a redstone torch. That's how you create the inversion there. Um, so when we come up here, we go and stand on this. This then powers that, and by powering that, the redstone torch turns itself off. Um, so we stand on that, we do whatever we're going to do, uh, and then when we're done and we come off, it unpowers it and the door opens again. Now, that is the distance I chose because of the whole being able to sprint and get through perfectly thing. But you can make it much more compact than that if you want. And this here is pretty much as compact as you're going to get this. And it's a very compact inverted circuit, the same as that one, just in less distance. So again, we can stand on here, the door shuts behind us, walk off of it, and it will open up again. Now, of course, there's all kinds of things you might want to use that for. I'm just trying to give you guys some little ideas as to how this stuff is practical. I think that knowing why what you're learning is practical and how it can be used in your actual Minecraft worlds is going to help with you uh, to retain that knowledge. And I would encourage you guys to go out there and make some redstone circuits, even if you don't really need them. In include them in your world. Start getting used to doing some redstone stuff. It will definitely help your learning. So these are the nighttime sensors. Um, and I just wanted to quickly talk about this because lighting in Minecraft can be a bit limited at times. Um, I think it's one of the things where you know there's not really loads of options and so I thought I'd just cover this very quickly. Most of you will know how to do this anyway, um, but basically you place down the daylight sensor and right click it to turn it into a nighttime sensor and you'll see here if I do slash time set night like that, um, these lights all then turn on. So the ways you can do it, you can have it uh, a nighttime sensor and then run a circuit off of that to your different lights around the place. You can simply put them on top and they will power the redstone torch like that. And you can do that by putting things underneath them as well and create like a lamp post or however you want to do that, that will work. Let's change this back to peaceful so we get rid of all the mobs because I don't want those. Um, but that's just an idea and a simple way that you can start integrating redstone into your Minecraft worlds and uh, making quite a cool effect so that when it turns to night time, your lights will turn on. Uh, so let's go back to uh, making it daytime for now. Okay guys, so the final contraption I wanted to show you today is something that you might find useful in your survival worlds. Um, now the idea of this is, you can see here there's two doors, and this wall here, um, everything on this side, uh, where we are right now, this is like your base area, so your town, your house, whatever's going on, this is all here. Um, and the idea is that if you're going out and you're about to go exploring or whatever else, and you need food, um, and the food can actually be interchanged with any item you like in the game, um, so if you wanted, you know, like tools or armor or weapons, whatever, um, you could put that in there. But I'm just doing it with food for this example. Um, all you do is you run through here like this, and like that, we get a load of food to be going out with, and we've got 30 there. Um, now, that is kind of cool, kind of useful um, in terms of, um, you know, like I say, if you need it for, you're about to go out and you need a load of food with you, you just do that. And then on the way back, you can just run through here like this, um, and you can get in this door. And you'll notice that I purposely didn't put it so that you could have a door on this side, uh, so that you could run through this door here. Um, the reason for that is I've, this has been designed as a one-way system. Um, you can make it multiple ways, but um, it's just it's just a bit of extra redstone and stuff. Um, so I was just showing you a very simple version today. Um, so let's break this down and see what's actually happening here. So we've got a tripwire hook. Uh, so the first thing to note that's different is that this is at this level. So just real quickly, I'll show you how to do it at this level. Um, because you'll notice that uh, if you put the tripwire hook up like this, uh, how do you place string between them? Well, really, all you do is put one on the floor and then click one on top like that, and there is your tripwire hook to do it at that level. Uh, now, why am I doing it at that level? Uh, the reason for that is what we want is to power this block here and power all of the blocks along the dispensers like this. So just to show you very quickly, guys, um, if we got a dispenser like this, one, two, three, and um, let's just get a whole load of steak like this so we're ready to go. So one two and number three in there and we get a, uh, a block here like this and let's get ourselves a lever for this demonstration of course it can be any input we use the tripwire hook over there 
and we put some redstone going down like that. You'll notice if I flick this lever, only one stake shoots out. Okay, the only thing that gets powered is this block here, and that's actually not being powered by this redstone, it's being powered by this block. Um, just to prove that, I can show you that if I were to chuck some stake back in there uh, and do it again, and there's no redstone there now, I was a little bit there, but that's doing nothing. Um, so it's the block that's powering it. So what you actually need is for the block like this uh, to power along the top of the dispensers and make sure there's one in there and you'll see this time flick the lever they all come out like that um, so that's how the kind of the mechanics of that is working um, and it's just kind of cool to have it at that height anyway as well so that's why i did that um, so just to have a little breakdown of this design now um, you'll notice here um, let's get rid of this hook actually because i want that to keep going off um, i've got some stairs in place and things like that that's to make sure all of the stake stays in the middle um, because if that if that wasn't there, these, so the dispensers are behind here like this. If we just had it like that, um, the food would shoot across and you might miss some. So by doing it this way, you contain it all. Um, so really all you're doing is on the blocks where the tripwire hook are attached, you run a redstone signal off like this. So this one here is where the hook would originally go. Um, and from there, you run it off like this. 15 blocks is the maximum we can do without using repeaters, that sort of thing. Same on the other side and that's how that works and then of course just a little uh, pressure plate either side of the doors um, to get out but not one to get back in thing is if you came back in this way uh, once you ran through here you would trigger the tripwire hook you'd shoot all your food out onto the floor uh, but you'd be here uh, so that'd just be kind of pointless <laughs> so that's why we have the door to get back in but this has a double function uh, this room is also how we access each of our dispensers on this side to reload them with food in the future um, and to do it on the other side here i'll just show you what's going on that's where they all are. So you need a little access point to get to these, but it's fairly compact and can be quite useful. And I say, it doesn't have to be food, it could be anything that you like. So as I say, guys, I just do these things to give you uh, some ideas. Um, and then from there, it's completely up to you what you do. You can come up with your own contraptions. That is the love of redstone. And I, in fact, highly encourage you to do that. Uh, so that's it for the second in the series of redstone tutorials, guys. Uh, next week, we are gonna get into some much more advanced concepts now that you know the basic fundamentals and all the different input sources and, of course, inversions. That is really the fundamental knowledge that you need. And if you have that down, then the latest stuff is going to be a lot easier. I can promise you that. So guys, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.